Why is it crucial to conduct regular security awareness training for employees in an enterprise environment? Is it A. It guarantees complete immunity against cyber threats? Is it B. It reduces the need for robust security policies? Is it C. It empowers employees to recognize and respond to security threats? Or is it D. It simplifies the management of security controls? Choose one answer. You now have 5 seconds. And the correct answer is C. It empowers employees to recognize and respond to security threats. Regular security awareness training is essential for empowering employees to recognize and respond to security threats. Educated employees serve as an effective first line of defense, helping to prevent social engineering attacks, identify phishing attempts, and maintain a security conscious culture within the organization. And for the incorrect answers, um, it guarantees complete immunity against cyber threats. No training can provide complete immunity. Awareness is about risk reduction. It reduces the need for robust security policies. Security awareness complements, not replaces the need for robust security policies. And it simplifies the management of security controls. Training adds complexity, but is crucial for an effective security posture. And for the next question of our exam, question number two. And the question states, what is the benefit of elasticity in cloud computing? Is it A, fixed and predictable resource allocation? Is it B, rapidly adjusting resources based on demand? Is it C, minimal scalability options? Or is it D, static and inflexible infrastructure? Choose one answer. You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, rapidly adjusting resources based on demand. Elasticity in cloud computing allows for the rapid adjustment of resources based on demand. This ensures optimal performance during peak periods and cost saving during lower demand, providing flexibility and efficiency in resource allocation. And for the incorrect answers, fixed and predictable resource allocation, it's the opposite of the dynamic nature of elasticity in the cloud. Minimal scalability options, elasticity enhances scalability by adjusting resources as needed, and static and inflexible infrastructure, elasticity promotes a dynamic and flexible infrastructure. And for the next question of our exam, question number three. And the question states, why is incorporating security into the DevOps pipeline essential for secure application development? Is it A, it slows down the development process? Is it B, it shifts security left, identifying issues earlier? Is it C, it only focuses on post-deployment security measures? Or is it D, it increases the likelihood of vulnerabilities? Choose one answer. You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B. It shifts security left, identifying issues earlier. Integrating security into the DevOps pipeline, known as DevSecOps, shifts security left in the development process. This early identification of security issues enables quicker resolution, reducing the likelihood of vulnerabilities reaching the production environment. And for the correct answers, it slows down the development process. DevSecOps aims to integrate security seamlessly without significant slowdowns. It only focuses on post-deployment security measures. DevSecOps addresses security throughout the development life cycle, and it increases the likelihood of vulnerabilities. The goal of DevSecOps is to reduce vulnerabilities by identifying them earlier. And for the next question of our exam, question number four. And the question states, what is a characteristic of multi-factor authentication or MFA? Is it A, it relies solely on a username and password? Is it B, it requires multiple instances of the same factor? Is it C, it enhances security by using multiple authentication factors? Or is it D, it simplifies users' access management? Choose one answer. You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C. It enhances security by using multiple authentication factors. Multi-factor authentication, or MFA, enhances security by requiring multiple authentication factors, such as something you know, a password, and something you have, a token or a smartphone. This adds an extra layer of protection, making it more challenging for unauthorized users to gain access. And for the incorrect answers, it relies solely on a username and password. MFA involves additional factors beyond just a username and a password. It requires multiple instances of the same factor. MFA involves different type of authentication factors, and it, it simplifies users' access management. While MFA adds complexity, it significantly improves security. And for the next question of our exam, question number five. 
and the question states, what is a key element of a cybersecurity resilience strategy? Is it A, ignoring incident response planning? Is it B, relying solely on preventive measures? Is it C, regularly testing and updating incident response plans? Or is it D, reacting to incidents without preparation? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is C, regularly testing and updating incident response plans. A crucial element of cybersecurity resilience is regularly testing and updating incident response plans. This ensures that organizations are prepared to effectively respond to and recover from security incidents, adapting the plan based on lessons learned from testing and real-world incidents. And for the incorrect answers, ignoring incident response planning, ignoring planning undermines cybersecurity resilience, Relying solely on preventative measures, resilience includes proactive and reactive measures, not solely preventive, and reacting to incidents without preparation. Cybersecurity resilience involves preparedness and proactive planning. And for the next question for exam, question number six. And the question states, what security considerations are important for embedded systems with internet connectivity? Is it A, security is not relevant for embedded systems? Is it B, prioritizing user convenience over security? Is it C, ensuring secure communication and updating mechanisms? Or is it D, relying on default settings for increased usability? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is C, ensuring secure communications and updating mechanisms. Security considerations for embedded systems with internet connectivity include ensuring secure communications channels and robust updating mechanisms. These measures are vi vital for protecting against vulnerabilities and ensuring the ongoing security of the embedded systems. And for the incorrect answer, security is not relevant for embedded systems. Security is crucial for all systems, including the embedded ones, prioritizing user convenience over security. Security should not be compromised for user convenience and relying on default settings for increased usability. Default settings may not provide adequate security. And for the next question for exam, question number seven. And the question states, why is it essential to restrict physical access to data centers? Is it A, convenience for employees? Is it B, increased likelihood of hardware failures? Is it C, protection against unauthorized access and tampering? Or is it D, faster response to equipment malfunctions? Choose one answer in our five seconds. And the correct answer is C. Protection against unauthorized access and tampering. Restricting physical access to data centers is essential for protecting against unauthorized access and tampering. Physical security controls, such as access cards and biometric systems, prevent unauthorized individuals from gaining physical proximity to critical infrastructure. And for the incorrect answers, convenience for employees. Convenience should not compromise security, especially in critical areas like data centers. Increased likelihood of hardware failures. Physical security controls do not directly impact hardware failures and faster response to equipment malfunctions. Response to malfunctions should focus on monitoring and remote management, not physical access. And for the next question for exam, question number eight. And the question states, what is the purpose of a digital signature in cryptographic terms? Is it A, encrypting confidential messages? Is it B, verifying the integrity and authenticity of digital content? Is it C, generating random cryptographic keys? Or is it D, hiding the identity of the sender? Choose one answer. You have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, verifying the integrity and authenticity of digital content. A digital signature in cryptographic terms is used to verify the integrity and authenticity of digital content. It provides each assurance that the content has not been altered and comes from the claim sender, adding a layer of trust to digital communication. And for the incorrect answers, encrypting confidential messages, encryption and digital signatures serve different purposes. Generating random cryptographic keys, digital signatures use asymmetric key pairs, but do not generate random keys. And hiding the identity of the sender, digital signatures confirm the identity rather than hide it. And for the next question of our exam, question number 9. And the question states, why is it essential to use HTTPS or hypertext transport for protocol secure for secure communication over the internet? Is it A, it offers faster data transfer rates? 
Is it B, it ensures the confidentiality and integrity of data? Is it C, it is resistant to all types of cyber attacks? Or is it D, it simplifies network configurations? Choose one answer. You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B. It ensures the confidentiality and integrity of data. HTTPS ensures the confidentiality and integrity of data during transmission over the Internet. It uses encryption like TLS slash SSL to protect against eavesdropping and tampering, providing a secure communication channel. And for the incorrect answers, it offers faster data transfer rates. HTTPS focuses on security, not necessarily speed. It is resistant to all types of cyber attacks. Whilst more secure, HTTPS is not immune to all types of cyber attacks. And it simplifies network configurations. Implementation may add complexity, but enhances security. And for the last question for exam, question number 10. And the question states, what is a common security measure to protect against SQL injection attacks in web applications? Is it A, disabling input validation? Is it B, using stored procedures and parameters queries? Is it C, storing sensitive data in plain text? Or is it D, sharing a single database user account? Choose one answer. You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, using stored procedures and parameterized queries. To protect against SQL injection attacks, it is crucial to use stored procedures and parameterized queries. This ensures that user input is trusted as the data rather than executable code, preventing unauthorized access to the database. And for incorrect answers, disabling input validation. Input validation is essential. Disabling it would increase vulnerability. Storing sensitive data in plain text. Storing sensitive data securely is important, but not a direct defense against SQL injection. And sharing a single database user account. Individual user accounts enhance accountability and security. Ladies and gents, this is the end of our exam. If and only if you found this video informative, make sure to drop a sub and share it with your friends. I hope you found this video informative and I will see you guys next time.